They are. Morgan Ortegas from the former State Department spokesperson joins us now. Morgan, at least they, uh, among the things, the big stories is they finally have an ambassador uh, in Ukraine. I did not, was not even cognizant of the fact they didn't even nominate anyone to this point. No, nope. it's been uh, almost a year and a half since this administration has been in power. And as you said, uh, no ambassador nominated. Um, they've had other trivial posts filled, but not this one. And this has been something that many of us have been critical for for quite some time because you needed to show the importance of having an ambassador there. As you guys have reported, um, it looks like diplomats are going to start going back into Ukraine and eventual uh, reopening of the embassy. The Brits already announced that last week. And it looks like some diplomats are going to take some day trips to Lviv. This this is really important, Brian. I think that this uh, really sets, a, sets the tone uh, for how the U.S. is approaching Ukraine. It's not easy to get U.S. diplomats in, right. and, and certainly they will be risking their lives to do it. So uh, I'm certainly happy to see this move, right. but the ambassador move is a year overdue. Absolutely. Uh, so a couple of things. When Secretary of Defense Austin says he wants to see the Russia weaken to the degree it cannot do the things it has done in the Ukraine, that might be something that you expect to hear inside the Pentagon. Should that be the public words? Because uh, I think it's important for people to understand they're fighting for Ukraine sovereignty, not against Russia. If you want to get your, uh, if you want right. to get the, your allies involved, correct? No, you're absolutely right. It's interesting you picked up on that. I did as well. I know Hugh Hewitt was talking about it this morning. Uh, you know, in, in modern warfare, um, these leaders, the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, have to be so careful about what they're saying because the Putin propaganda machine, especially internally within Russia, um, is, is really prolific. Listen, the Russian people are rallied behind Putin. They have rallied behind the flag. They are supporting um, this incursion by and large. And so, again, exactly what you said. Said, we should be focusing on strengthening uh, Ukraine, right. uh, strengthening, uh, strengthening, excuse me, our NATO allies, and, and these sort right. of missteps um, that the Secretary of Defense gave do not help the help the case. Listen, these this trip that they made is really hard. I was in Kiev a little over two years ago with Zelensky, with Mike Pompeo. I've been into war zones with Mike Pompeo. Uh, going in like this with the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Defense, it's an enormous feat what those teams had to pull off today. Uh, let's talk about that. You've accomplished so much serving in the military, serving as diplomat. <laughs> serving uh, the government, serving under Mike Pompeo, but you're not going to have a chance to run for uh, the Republican mm -hmm. nomination in Tennessee as a congresswoman. You got booted off the ballot. Why? Yes. You know, I'm not really sure, Brian. Um, there's a slate of people who were really competitive and who had raised a lot of money who were deemed in a private secret vote uh, not to be, uh, you know, Republican enough, um, which I think we all think is laughable. Um, and then unfortunately, there was a pretty big controversy last week where there's a state senator who said some very anti-Semitic remarks about me and about President Trump's family, his which daughter. Were? Um, uh, you know, he said that the only reason that uh, th that basically no one cared except the president's daughter and son-in-law if I were kicked off the ballot because we were all Jewish. Um, and I just want to thank uh, Senator Marsha Blackburn. She is the only leader in the state who came out and condemned those statements. Um, she's a real leader. She's a very good friend. And we know that not right. everybody in Tennessee abides by these incredibly anti-Semitic remarks by uh, State Senator Nicely. Only 20 seconds left, but what's next for you? Are you going to fight this still or are you going to move on? Listen, we're looking at all options, but you know, my life's goal is to stand for a strong America, a strong America first uh, agenda around the world. This is what I did for President Trump, but I'll continue to do. And we're going to work on efforts to clean up the corruption here in the Tennessee GOP as well. All right. There you go. Morgan Ortega, thanks so much. Thank you. All right.